What's up? Uh, 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 uh. Today we're gonna do a stream of consciousness video. It's gonna be so much fun. Hopefully my boobs weren't just out. So who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? But before we get into this, I want to know from all of you guys, because I know you're predominantly male, what do you guys think about the Gen Z trend of the mom jeans like I'm wearing right now? They're loose, they're weird, they don't show the butt, but I was curious because as you guys probably know, I have lost some weight recently and I wanted to see what this kind of style would look like on me because in my opinion, it only looks good on really skinny girls but it still does not flatter them because it doesn't flatter anyone in my opinion. Um, but I, I, I don't know, dude, like, I feel like, I just, I just don't know. Love the tiny crop tops that are in right now, but don't love the loose jeans. I just feel like, I just miss back in my day when they had the super, super low rise jeans with the whale tail thong coming out of the top. And I'm like, man, the 90s, not that I was young in the 90s. I was like, not really. Well, I was very young. I was so young that I was just born. But like in the early 2000s and even the 90s, shit was popping off back then. Bitches were bitches. They were hot as fuck and it was great. Anyway, today I'm probably not gonna edit this video much because I want it to be one of those like laying down therapy type videos where I want to just kind of word vomit, introspect, dump at you and see what you guys say. My favorite comments on videos like these are the ones where people are like, oh my God, you're basically just speaking into existence how I feel, I thought I was the only one. Or people who give me pushback on what I'm thinking or maybe even try to psychoanalyze me a little bit because it does help to hear other perspectives from people who are not within my own experience. Um, and just, just hear what you guys think. Like, what is your experience? If it's totally different from mine or it's the same, doesn't matter to me. I wanna hear it all. So, let me actually get comfortable. We're gonna change position probably multiple times in this video. Um, but I like these to be more like I'm actually laying with you guys and like talking things out. I think that's cool. Um, so, I wanna talk about my lips are very dry. I wanna talk about friendship. I've been thinking a lot lately about friendship type stuff. In the past, you guys know, make sure there's no nip slips. I have talked pretty badly about my boyfriend's friends or friends' wives or just like in general how he does friendship. And I feel like a lot of it it kind of makes me cringe when I listen to it back because while I'm venting and I feel like it's valid that I vent um, and I feel like you guys are the place where I would vent, it also cringes me out because I know it's coming from a place of like being within my own experience and being who I am and frustration and sometimes even hurt and me thinking that my way is the better way. I don't think there's anything wrong with my way feeling like from within my own experience is the better way, you know? Like, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that. I think everyone should kind of think that the way that they're doing things is the right way, at least for them. I don't gain like an ego from it. I don't go like objectively, like my way of living or my style of friendship is the better way or whatever. Like, I'm not like that at all. I always, in the back of my mind, know that everything is subjective, not everything, maybe everything. I don't know, that's a totally different topic, but. So for me, most of the like stuff that I've said about them or about my experience with them has come from the the huge hurdle I feel like I've had to overcome basically to to be with someone who doesn't do friendship styles the way I do or at least didn't um, to try to navigate a relationship where that's basically the only rift now that we have we don't even it's not even a rift anymore really it's actually pretty much worked out and that's why I kind of want to talk about it today because I do feel like a lot of it has resolved and we've either, you know, agreed to disagree on certain things. Like I give him a lot more space to just do like whatever with his friends without me being involved. Um, just understanding, like I don't have a problem with, so a little background if you guys haven't been watching all of my random videos. I have an issue with the like boys boy mentality and the like, yeah, when we go out, like we have to discard the wives or the women because like they're gonna hold us back type of mentality. And like men like one thing and women like another. 
And when they put this into practice, I always get pushed off to go hang out with the women or I have to like go entertain the wives. And that's not my, that's not who I am. That's not my personality type. That's not where I feel comfortable. I've always felt more comfortable with the guys and I like male centered, um, fucking hobbies. I've always been more like my, my partner is my best friend or one of my best friends and not like I'm at war with my partner and we're just complimenting each other, but we're very, very different and I have to hide things from them, that kind of thing. And so it's been really odd. To, I've never, I would never personally like be friends with someone who was like, don't bring your boyfriend. I don't like men around or like, you know, like it's so nice to see you without your boyfriend. If there was any of that kind of like vibe, um, I would probably not be friends with that person anymore. Or I would be like, yeah, I, I don't appreciate you. Like disrespect. I see this disrespect. So I'd be like, I don't like anywhere I go hunters invited in my opinion. That's just how I've always operated. And I totally understand if someone's like, like, Oh my God, I need to talk to you one-on-one -on -one cause I'm having like troubles or like, I I'm really like vulnerable right now. Then yeah, one-on-one -on -one time is fine. But the whole like going out as a group and excluding a whole gender or excluding the person that's supposed to be your best friend or your partner is like ne never been okay for me. So trying to navigate and respect that, that way of life and trying to bridge the gap to where I'm that certain personality and his friends are that opposite personality and just trying to find a place where we can co-mingle and exist both as people in Hunter's life has been very interesting and at times very hurtful and at times hard to understand. So I wanted to talk less about anything specific and um, more about just friendship in general, but that's where I've come from in the past talking about friendship because you guys know my best friend is Jay, other best friend would be Hunter. Hunter's like quickly becoming my best friend, obviously he's my life partner. So that's the trajectory I want to take with the relationship. Um, and so like my French, like my other two best friends are red and cold, AKA Brandon. You see them on my live stream on Twitch, like often, um, red actually helps me out with my business now, like replicating my content. So I, you know, I have like a uh, only fans. He'll replicate my only fans content over on Fansly for me. Um, and sort things for me and just help me out in general. So like we're kind of in business together too. Like I trust him a lot. I've just always felt more at home with guys and I do have female friends, but like they have to be kind of weird females, you know, they have to be females that are super into philosophy, females who don't have the normal, super strong feminine characteristics. And there are some girls that I've met through Hunter that I do vibe with a little bit, but still at the same time, I think almost every one of them has some of those kind of dead end female characteristics that I don't really like. I've noticed that I'm a little too misogynistic sometimes and a little too hating of like women in general, but I think it's the stereotypical female traits that I tend to not really identify with as much or like as much, but there are plenty of women. So I'm not saying I like hate women or anything like that. Even, even though I joke like that, I, I don't, there are plenty of women that I love very much. Um, you know, my best female friend, Kristen, she's great, but she's like, it's different. She's like a gamer. She's kind of like a guy. She's delicate, like a girl, which I love because that plays off of the kind of dynamic that I like. I'm more of like the mommy dommy in the, like when we're having threesomes or something, not me and Kristen, but I wish. But <laughs> like when I'm having a threesome, I always, I always play more of like the masculine role too. So being able to be in, in the more masculine role while also being around someone that's like more of a dude and can get me and is not going to be like hyper emotional and hyper competitive in a toxic way. And, you know, it's just going to be like what a good girlfriend in my opinion should be. Like I can, I love that. And the people that I know that are like that, which it's hard, it's few and far between. It's like Paige and Kristen are my two best ones, but you know, it's not that they're not women. They have feminine traits. They have feminine urges. They have, you know, they conduct themselves in a, in a heterosexual relationship, pretty much like women, but they just have that male edge that I can identify with more. Um, so that's just like me and how I've always been. And I've, I've never really had, when I had close female friends, when I was younger, I was always like, the the leader and they were the follower and that they, they would often get really toxically competitive like i had a girl one of my biggest female 
uh, friendships when I was when I was like a teenager was this girl named Marlena and like she adored me she treated me like I was like her hero or something I was she was like my sidekick and I liked her a lot and stuff and we were she's a lot of fun she liked to talk and like about boys even though she kind of went to like uh fucking uh what's the like, the group the fucking sunday group thing she was like a pushed into like churchiness by her family but she was like oh yeah dude i would love to fuck this guy or whatever like she was more like me more open and fun and all that but she was definitely like a sidekick had sidekick vibes and it's always been like that my whole life and those girls always end up doing something fucked up to me behind my back because I think the power dynamic is too much for women. I think power dynamic with men is more like adoration and wanting to learn from the guy. Not always, obviously, but it's more of a trend that way, at least what I've seen. It's like adoration and wanting to learn more about the guy and then it's like a, a fucking, um, one of those, what are they called relationships? The mentor-mentee relationships that are actually like really great for forming bonds and growing as a man you know those are great relationships and with women like marlena she ended up just trying to fuck my boyfriend <laughs> just like i think they all harbor like a, an anger or a jealousy much easier and much more competitively and it makes sense i watched a video it was actually one of those um those reaction videos by Brittany simon I, I love watching her stuff it's so funny she annoyed me at first but now i love her i I've actually reached out to her um, thinking about maybe talking to her or something, but that'd be cool. Anyway, that's a side note. Um, I watched a video where she was reacting to this girl talking about the like biology behind female cattiness and female toxic competition and stuff like that. And I resonated with that a lot because that's my experience. And obviously anything I've said that is more misanthropic or not misanthropic um fucking misogynistic or anything being like oh i hate women or something is not me actually saying that i hate women it's me saying that like i can't stand the stereotypical traits of a woman and i've been hurt before so many so many times by not not necessarily something that it doesn't have to be like marlena where she fucking like tried to fuck my man it's often just like small things behind my back what the fuck my mom just texts me what's your social security number no. How did my mom get hacked? <laughs> First of all, my mom has my social security card. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, is she testing me or something? So what was I talking about? It doesn't have to be as catastrophic as like, oh yeah, she tries to steal my man, but it's like little jabs that you, you can tell there's like competition there. Like there's a girl that I, I really like and I really like hanging out with and she's, you know, kind of fun and bi and stuff, but I can almost see it in her eyes that there's like, I don't know, like I was wearing this really hot dress last time I saw her and like the way she like looks out of the corner of her eye, it's almost like I can feel the jealousy and that always with women, it just seems like not always that's just my experience seems like that will always manifest as something negative down the line so I've got my guard up always and like she's super overly nice to me and that's like a, a very normal female trope type person super nice to you in your face and then rude behind your back you know so I don't know um, anyway what I really wanted to talk about was not female male dynamics or like I said anything to do with what I've talked about previously with like hunters group of friends and how I don't really fit in with them I more want to talk about an idea that I had recently me and hunter do these walks at night and I randomly was like I find it really hard to care to keep up most relationships like I Hunter has a lot of friends that feel the need to be like, hey, we haven't seen each other in a while, let's go catch up. And then the the venue for which they catch up is like, uh, the venue in which they catch up is like something that's like unhealthy or pointless. So um, a good example is like, hey, let's go catch some drinks or let's go get dinner. Like dinner can be okay, but it still throws you off. Like for me and Hunter right now being like so health minded and we have like a routine. And honestly, when you get into a really healthy routine, like my stomach rejects every cheat meal I have. And I'm like constipated and sick for like a few days afterwards. So like going out and having like a weird dinner and it's just like, 
or as, especially with drinks, which is what you know a lot of people expect. A lot of people our age and younger expect to be drinking if they're going to go out together. It's like it, it just doesn't seem worth it. So I was at the injection place the other day, and there was a guy there. I'm not going to like name any names or say what he does or anything, but he just randomly brought up. He's like, if my friends want to see me. Like they gotta do something with me that like I'll already be doing, like something that is is gonna benefit me. And it, that sounds so mean, but he's like, no, we're gonna catch a lift together. We're gonna go to the gym, or we're gonna go on a hike, or we're gonna, you know, you do one of my big hobbies or something. And that's kind of more in my vein because there's only like two or three people in the world that I care to just like sit down with and be like, yo, I need to hear everything about what's going on. How have you been? What's going on? Like, and I also don't feel like for me personally, I don't feel like friendships need to be high maintenance. I really don't like high maintenance friendships. So if someone feels like they have to see me constantly or they feel like they have to get some kind of conditional quota out of me in order to feel like they're my friend instead of just picking up where we left off, understanding that we're adults and we're busy and we have like significant others and lives of our own and hobbies of our own. Like if you can't understand that, then I really don't, I can't be friends with you. Like I would want someone that can get deep with me and talk to me and pick up where we left off and just feel like a friend that I don't have to like question, are they talking shit about me behind my back because I haven't seen them for a while or is their love for me waning because I'm not constantly throwing myself in their face like, hey, hey, I'm here, make sure you make time for me, love me. Because that's also something that hurt me when I was younger too. It's like, I'm, I'm actually okay with her now. I, I talk to her occasionally, but one of my best friends when I was growing up, Ashley moved out of like state and she got other friends named Tara that she would like post on social media. Like this is my best friend. And I was like, for me, we were best friends forever, even though you moved away, even though I only get to see you like once a year or maybe even less. And I made the effort to like go like an hour away to see her. It, it just like hurt me a lot to be, and then it, she would, it was always kind of like, she was just like, oh, that's just like colloquial thing, you know, or like she's my best friend at this school. But for me, my loyalty is like pretty deep. So like my feelings get hurt when someone is like that, where I, and it's just like, it gives me anxiety to even think about having to see people like even once a month, like if there's any kind of quota, and this was what that guy at my injection place was talking to me about too crazy how I just randomly get into a deep conversation with like a guy at the place. But, um, he was saying like, if someone guilt trips you into going to see them, you're already like not feeling good about the interaction. You're already not, you, you know, you're feeling like guilty instead of feeling happy and excited to see the person. So on one hand, I do think it makes sense to, you know, want to catch up with your friends. On the other hand, I don't, ever feel like it's worth it to like spend that time not working or spend that time not with my favorite person like Hunter or my favorite people. I, I just doesn't ever seem worth it to go do that and take time away from my health, my, my main people and my main goals in life. Because for me, I know it's a little bit crazy, but for me, like Every moment that I'm not spending with my favorite person is, it feels like a moment that I kind of regret a little bit. You know, like I want, I don't want to miss moments and I don't want to at the end of my life ever think that like, wow, I wasted so much time doing so many things that I didn't want to do just to keep up appearances or just because I felt like I had to. Um, that guy at the fucking injection place actually said something interesting. He said that his girlfriend helped him be more like this. And he said that, he asked her once, like, how do you tell what like things you say yes to and what things you say no to? And she said, if your gut in your gut, like if you feel it in your gut that you're not like a hundred percent, like, yeah, let's fucking go, then don't do it. It's not worth it. Cause I think a lot of people just feel obligated to go to all these things to keep up with even family members. Like you don't have to keep up with family members. If, if they don't bring you peace, if they don't bring you happiness, if they're not bettering you, and I wonder how many of you guys are going to take this as like, if they can't do something for you, you know, cause I'm not saying it like that. I'm just saying we have such a finite amount of time in life, like total. And I want to spend as many of those moments as possible doing things that I love and things that I like to do. I don't want to like 
just to save face or just to keep a friendship go out and like drink a bunch and like how do you even keep up more than three friends if they need to see you once a month that means like four friends you need to see them you need to see a friend every week that means like the two weekend days that you have where you're not working and should be spending with your 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 person your significant other you then have to spend at least one of them with different people and then some of them might expect more FaceTime and it's just like Hunter has so many friends like so many friends he has like a core group of like six to ten friends but i feel like that is even too much it gives me anxiety to even think about it <laughs> it's like having trying to keep up with that many friends like keeping up with jay is enough for me now and like playing video games see the reason that i'm still friends with people like brandon aka cold on my on my twitch stream is because we have such good chemistry playing video games we love playing video games together so when we're also talking about like how are you doing or talking philosophy and stuff things that i also really value and enjoy doing like while we're doing that we're also playing a video game so it makes sense for us to catch up because we still have things in common that we both love to do that we feel like are good uses of our time and good ways to spend our time so i'm not saying that you should want to spend all of your time with one person or you should want to spend 100 percent of your time only like bettering yourself making money on the grind in fact i think on the grind is a little bit toxic and like not even conducive to a happy life um, I think a better work balance where you find something you love and you do it not to the point of exhaustion and hating it, <laughs> which I think I have a pretty good balance here because while I do get burnt out sometimes, mostly because Hunter has to work, so I just end up working indefinitely or Hunter has to go out. So I end up working indefinitely because that's another thing that I have. I can't just like, I need to learn it to like find ways to relax, but I'm always like, but I could just like make more money and get closer to our goal. And like, I like making money. I like what I do for work. So like, why not just get ahead, you know? And then I just end up like not realizing that I'm a little like physically burnt out or mentally burnt out. But yeah, I am not saying you have to do everything perfectly. I'm just saying like, think about it. Like how many times have you gone out, woken up the next morning and you're like, oh, I feel like fucking shit. I wish I didn't stay out that long. Or how many, just think about someone who, you realize at a certain point was not a good friend, but the red flags were still kind of there. Or think about all the times that you're, like how many hours did you waste on that person? Or think about all the times that like, you, your family kind of guilt trips you or make you feel, makes you feel bad about stuff or makes you feel like you need to come to this event or that event or do this for them or that for them because they raised you or their, their blood or something like, is that really what you want to be doing deep down in your heart? And like, I think a lot of people will say yes. Interestingly, I was talking about this topic with Hunter on one of our walks, I think it was last night. And I was like, so <clears throat> when you would go out and party with your friends and shit, cause he used to do it like every weekend. I was like, did your gut go hell yeah? And he's like, yeah, it did. Like I was like, when's the next fucking thing? Let's fucking go. And I'm like, damn. Cause I can't imagine my gut personally going hell yeah for like more than one drinking day, like a month. You know what I'll do it more than that. And I have done it more than that for sure. But like on the second one, I'm like, okay. And then on the third one, I'm like, okay, I'm more just saying like, these are my personal preferences, obviously, but I'm more just saying that like, I hope you guys are realizing that you have so little time on this earth and that you don't have to people please or do things that people think is normal or people expect of you. You really don't have to do anything. Just do whatever the fuck you want. Cause like at the end of the day, like I, I don't ever want to be like, I wasted all this time on people who aren't fulfilling me. And I think that you can. So, um, on the topic of relationships being, um, transactional, I think that all relationships are transactional, but I think that love can be unconditional. So let me try to explain this because when you hear like all relationships are transactional, which is like a, it's a thing I've said before. It's like a philosophical take that I have, um, that you're always getting something out of every relationship that you have. They can be more toxically or more, more shallowly transactional. Obviously like it can be like, I'm only talking to you to get sex or I'm only talking to you to further my business. It can be that shallow, sure. But when I say all relationships are transactional, I don't mean it in a shallow way at all. I mean like if someone isn't serving you anymore, if someone's not like 
giving you anything in return and you're giving everything to the relationship, then perhaps it's time to like let go of that person as a part of your life because friendships are a two way street, you know? And I really feel like a lot of people waste a lot of time just people pleasing people who clearly don't care about them, you know? So like I can unconditionally love like family members or I can unconditionally love my friends, but like sometimes you just have to part ways because they, it's just like a different part in your life and they're not serving you and perhaps even making your life toxic or something. And so like every relationship is a give and take. Every relationship requires two people to work on it. It doesn't have to be like hard work or anything, especially in like a more casual friendship, but it has to be something where you feel like you're getting out what you're putting in and you guys both care to work on it. And that's true for romantic relationships and just friendship. It really is because, you know, there's a lot of people who just like, well, try, they'll just like talk to you about their day. And then if you talk about theirs, they kind of, it's just like whatever. And they kind of use you to just like vent about their relationship, but they wouldn't do the same for you. You can love those people unconditionally even. Like they could like rape, murder, and pillage. Grape, murder, and pillage. And you can still be like, I have love for you or I love what you've done for me. Like a legacy love, kind of like, I, I respect and love everything you've done for me, but like, you know, you have now done something or not done something that's now made it so that I just don't really want you in my life. And I think that's a healthy boundary to set too. So for me, my main thing about this is like, I'm just like, I want, I just don't really see the benefit of having many friends. I feel very fulfilled in having companions that enjoy all of the facets of things that I enjoy. Hunter is the closest to fulfilling everything because he loves outdoorsy stuff. He loves obviously the sex, obviously like spending time with me. He tries to play video games with me. Just like time spent with him is amazing. Quality time with him is amazing. And our, a lot of our interests overlap like eating <laughs> and going to the gym. So fitness and eating kind of counterintuitive, but like we love both of those things. So cheat meals are like sacred to us. I remember when we first started this and I wasn't so like sure of our relationship. I was like, please don't have your cheat meal with like someone else. Like, oh my God, like, <laughs> you know, it's like really sacred for us. And um, for philosophy and philosophical stuff, I have cold, I have red, I have J. Uh, for video games, I have all three of those too. And those were always like my main tenets. It's like, can you have a deeper conversation? Do you want to have a deeper conversation? And do you play video games? So I have pretty much everything that I like is satisfied and met. And I'm honestly thinking about like, with the rest of my free time, if I have any, I kind of like being alone. Like I really like working alone. I like vibing alone. I waste a lot of time just like listening to music. I would love to have time and, and the safety, I guess, cause I actually go on pretty hard, scary remote hikes, but I would love to just throw in some death metal and like do a hard strenuous hike alone or just like, like I'm fine alone. So when I think, do I want to keep up relationships? Do, do I have the energy to go out and be like, yeah, let's catch up over some drinks and shit. Like, no, I don't, I just don't. I, I don't, and I don't see why that's valuable. I don't understand the prerogative of people who have so many friends and constantly need to be with like a large group of their friends or any friends like every day of the week. And I see a lot of that on social media and a lot of people who are like that. And I wonder if it's just, if it's immaturity, not, not to, you know, do that thing where I'm like, my way it's better, but like, I'm, I'm wondering what it stems from. Like, why would you constantly need to be with other people who are like, not the person that you want to like spend your life with and your teammate for life. And like, are those people comfortable alone? Are those people just more people people? I can fully wrap my head around the possibility that people are just so different from me that that is also another healthy way of living, but just like not one that would be healthy for me. So let me know what you think. Are you uh, the kind of person who like sets up strong boundaries and gives no fucks and has very few friends and is fine with losing friends? Are you the kind of person that people pleases and has to keep up with a million friends and you're exhausted? Or are you the in-between, the kind of person who really loves having a large friend group with a lot of friends and it energizes you to keep up with that and you really enjoy it 
but you can also spend time alone, but you just prefer to never do that. <laughs> or maybe you're a person who, cause like I always look down on relationships too, that are like the ones that Hunter's friends have where it's like, yeah, you're my partner in a way, but in like a way where there's like a wall there. And it really feels like the friends are the bros, you know? That's like family. Sorry, it stopped. But then the girlfriend is like also family, but in a, in a more shallow way. Like society has told me that I need an opposite sex partner. So now I have this, but we, we keep secrets. We, you know, like the people you're really honest with are the, the bros that you go out with and you're like, yeah, that bitch is so hot. Oh yeah, I cheated over here. Yeah, I fucked over here. Oh, I would totally do that. Yeah, man. But then I can also be open to the idea that like, People compartmentalize differently than I do, and those people are equally as important, you know, the, the wife and the, the bro. Or maybe like they feel like they have to, this is also something that I feel like is probably true. Maybe they feel like they have to keep up that bro facade in order to have any male friendships. Maybe they don't feel like themselves when they're, you know, checking out other girls and being overt about what they say and not watching their mouths. Maybe they like the, the comfort that their wife gives them at home and prefer that, but they're just trying to keep up a facade or something. I don't know. I, obviously there are a lot of people who have settled poorly and obviously there are a lot of people who, who are not compatible and shouldn't be together, but perhaps that can work too, where they are compatible and they're each other's home, but they just feel the need to keep up these different relationships that are more shallow and I, I just don't really understand the idea. I, I'm just so different from the average person I think with relationships. Like I don't think it's normal. There's a lot of things that I don't think is normal that a lot of people do constantly. Like I don't, I would not want to be with a partner. So I'm not saying I don't think it's normal cause I think I'm the abnormal one honestly, but I don't think it's normal to, for me, I wouldn't like it. I need to stop using that language to like go to bed at separate times from your significant other to not have the like cuddles and the sex in the morning and at night to not like synchronize your day as much as possible to not do things together. Like I um, saw someone doing like 75 hard challenge and I asked him if he, his wife was doing it with him and he's like, no. And that like boggled my mind. Like you're making a, a big sacrifice in your life. That's like difficult and she's not like doing it in solidarity with you. And there was like another time when someone was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, so some girl's boyfriend had to fast because he had to get a colonoscopy for some reason. And I was like, did you do it with him? And she's like, oh hell no. It's like, I was eating whatever I want. I would like go to, go to the store and like just eat in my car to like not make him jealous. And it's just like, Huh, that's so weird. When I want a partner, I want to like do life with them as like a fucking teammate. And like, if my week sucks, their week's gonna, they're gonna do whatever they can to like do pretty much the same thing with me in like solidarity. And that makes sense. Like we go to bed at the same time, we synchronize our shit. We're like partners, you know? Like we got separate careers and separate friends and separate hobbies sometimes, but like the, the main things, the at night, in the morning, like routine type stuff has got, it's gotta be synchronized. It just, just feels like I'm, I'd rather, what am I just having a roommate or something? <laughs> so for me, that makes no sense. Let me know what you guys think about this. Keep an open mind. Um, I'm really starting to think that like everyone is a certain way because of traumas that are not necessarily horrific traumas, just like the way they were raised or little things that happened to them in life and their preferences and personality. And on top of that, that's just basically how they are. And anyone can change who they are or how they are. And anyone can go to therapy and fix whatever traumas they want to fix. But it's all up to you, like a character creator, to decide what you want to work on and what you want to change and what you want to accept as a personality trait, which I think is kind of interesting because I've accepted as a personality trait that I'm going to be a clingy person who wants a teammate. I have not accepted as a personality trait that I'm not going to be able to handle crazy shit. Like that I'm, I'm going to be someone who like ties someone else down if that's not what they want. Like there's a lot of things that I want to change about myself that I worked to, that I have changed about myself that took a lot of work because I, I rejected it as part of my personality because you can change yourself. And sometimes it's hard to decide like, how do I weigh what I should change and what I should keep? And I think it's just um, about how important it is to you morals wise uh, or like values wise and how hard it would be to change and how much it would improve your life if you did change. And it's like a balancing act of 
subjectivity and sometimes I wish there was just an obvious answer like no this is objectively better for you and a lot of people will tout these like objective answers like that's not healthy well the only reason something isn't healthy if we actually reflect into it is is it affecting your life super negatively if it's not or if you enjoy it then how is it not healthy just because you assume that it's not healthy like Oh yeah, spending a lot of time with your partner is not healthy. Like some people will say that or like codependency, they'll, they'll call a lot of like shit that like I do not see as codependency, like not healthy, but it's like, it's kind of just like a preference. Like how is it hurting us? Like how is it hurting? I think the only time anything like that hurts you is if you literally can't or you'll die or something. But if you have a preference for something that's a little bit clingy or even if you have a preference for something that's like, I need a lot of space. Like if it's, if your partner is fine with that too, cool, you found someone you're compatible with. If not, I don't know, like how much does it shrink your dating pool? <laughs> I love you guys so much. Thanks for letting me talk. I did want to say, holy shit, Friday Night Mail is back and it went really well. I, I'm excited to do the next one. I'm sorry that today is not one, but I actually, right now I'm looking for an editor that can do it, but it has to be an editor that's okay with nudity too. So, I'm for now doing it myself and you know, Friday night mails are a little bit uh, editing intensive. So it takes a while. Um, I'm, 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 I'm bringing it back though. It's fun. I already have some stuff to unbox and I'm excited for it. So I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye guys. <gasps> Whoo, mom jeans. Oh yeah. See, I don't know how to make jeans not cut into my stomach too. Like even when I, it's like, I have to like, because when you sit down, right, when you sit down, the ass goes back and this pulls back a little bit with the ass. And then so it is cutting into your stomach, even if you don't have like stomach fat. I always thought like, oh, when I got a flat, like a flatter stomach, jeans won't cut into my stomach. But no, like it's still cutting in because it's pulling on the, look, look at this. It's pulling on the back. Like the back is all out and then this is all whatever. And I'm going to stand up and then I'm going to show my stomach and it's going to have a fucking like line on it. I don't know how to avoid that. I just hate jeans, I guess. I just stick to leggings. I don't know. If you guys um, have any suggestions about that, I know I have a mostly male audience, but if you have any, any of the whamens out there that just watched me be misogynistic for half the video and still love me, you're one of the cool ones. <laughs> you're like basically a, a pick me for me. But um, I appreciate you and let me know how to fix this because this is one of the great uses of women, not that that doesn't sound misogynistic, to get beauty tips because I am often fucking clueless until I have a group of female friends. <laughs> Bye guys, love you.